the beginning. I'm not going to fight your war. I'm going to end it. Hey, what's going on, movie fans, comic book fans, Marvel fans from around the world? We are here for another MCU film, the 21st film in the MCU with Captain Marvel. And you all want to know, is Carol Danvers, is Captain Marvel the next best thing? Is she going to be the strongest Avenger? Is she going to come through and kick Thanos' ass in Avengers Endgame? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery. And this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Captain Marvel. I really do appreciate it. Now, you guys know if you know me and you see my reviews and videos before, you know that I love comic book movies, movies, especially MCU movies. These are the films that I look forward to the most out of anything put out there. And now we have Captain Marvel starring Carol Danvers. Of course, I'm a big fan of hers, Miss Brie Larson. I'm not a Captain Marvel you know fanatic i don't know much about her like i do captain america or black panther or iron man but i do know a good amount about her especially from the avengers earth Mightiest heroes which came on tv many 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 years ago but when they started promoting this film the first trailer and the first well actually the first few trailers it was kind of so-so some of them i was liking but you know some of them i thought they were just okay and kind of repeating the other ones but as more material started coming out from the studio marvel disney i did get get excited and for the most part guys you know all of my expectations you know were met and after seeing this movie the first thing i want to say about this movie is my goodness gracious i cannot wait to see avengers endgame if you're excited for avengers endgame i don't blame you you should be but after you see captain marvel you're going to be that much more excited now i'll go ahead and get this out of the way as we all know there are two credit scenes there's a mid credit scene and then there is a post credit scene at the very very end and you know marvel they always do that the mid credit scene that's the best that's the one that's going to get you hopping in your seats well actually i don't want to hype it too much but i was excited about it everybody else in the theater was excited about it as well and that's what kind of just sent me over the moon like dang can avengers endgame hurry up and get here now the post credit scene you know you got to wait through all the credits it's like 10 to 15 minutes you know it may do something for you it really didn't do anything for me there is something there but you know it was just kind of so so but let's actually talk about the movie now this is being directed by anna bolden and ryan fleck and i'll go ahead and admit i don't know much about them i haven't heard of them before until this movie started being promoted but they're both they're they're co-directors not just on this film but on a number of films they did films like sugar mississippi grand uh and it's kind of a funny story and i've never heard of those before it's just what i looked up on uh their filmography on imdb and to say you know they really don't have that much experience with big budget films and things like that and that's okay i mean kevin feige is at the helm of this but you know they really did do a great job um i really did enjoy this film and the starting off what i liked about it first is you know the world building now we with the mcu you kind of hear some people you know complaining sometimes that oh this is just another mc mcu movie it kind of seems like some stuff that we've seen from the past before and that is not the case with this at all this is truly a standalone movie even with it taking place on earth and parts of it taking a place in space and across the galaxy kind of like what gardens of the galaxy did but it still stands alone and when we have the earth setting with the main avengers captain america uh iron man and things like that but we did get another sense of the world or of the mcu with thor thor ragnarok and thor the dark world you know but we also got a different sense of the world the mcu with black panther that stood alone that was kind of like its own thing and then of course of guardians of the galaxy and you may be saying to yourself okay how many times can they do that and they did that in this movie and that's just one of the things that i noticed at the very beginning is the kree uh world the kree empire and how they built that and i mean you only got like a couple of wide shots and it was beautiful 
it was still breathtaking to me but besides all these visuals and worlds and designs of buildings that you've never seen before i think it was just the character development and the, the chemistry between the two leads in this movie with jude law playing ron what is his name i always for yon rog and of course brie larson playing carol danvers verse or uh captain marvel they had a great chemistry on uh, screen i love them it seemed like you know they have had a relationship a platonic relationship for the longest and it just kind of was not like force into this movie and that's just kind of what, what was speaking to me at the very beginning of this movie now i also like that with this kree empire this kree world building like the technology and the fighting and things like that the technology is of course something that we've never seen before i mean we've seen iron man tony stark do a whole bunch of stuff you know with black panther and wakanda we got vibranium and then over here in thor's world we got uru metal and guardians of the galaxy are doing their own thing over here but uh, and they don't shove it down your face but with with captain marvel in the Cree, it's very subtle but you can't help to notice like oh my gosh the technology that they're using is just like really out of this world like this is something new this is something that i've never seen before and just uh, you know give me more of that and then when you have guardians of the galaxy i mean this stands alone from the guardians of the galaxy but at the same time it ties into it because you know we have lee pace coming back as running the accuser and he doesn't have like a big gigantic role in this movie but his presence is felt and i did appreciate it and i did not really care for his character in guardians of the galaxy the first one that came out with august 2014 i thought it was horrible i thought that was like the absolutely worst part of the movie the villain and th that was just trash and i'm not saying like i said he's not coming through shining right here but i did notice him but um, with the technology and the way they fly through space and things like that, like I said, it stands on its own, but I was just kind of noticing like, wow, I kind of like the way that they are tying this in and kind of expanding on this world that we are, uh, that we already know something else that like us, this just stood out to me and just makes this movie stand on its own. It's just kind of like the missions and like, I don't like action just for the sake of action. I like plot within the action. That's one of the reasons why I'm not just the biggest fan of the latest Transformers movies uh that were directed by uh, michael bay not this last bumblebee movie i mean i like the first transformers movie and i like bumblebee but the, the other transformers movie is just a bunch of action and explosions and they, they're just all you got to do is like no go unplug this or press the button and then your goal would be accomplished no there is a mission in hand like, okay we have to do this and we have to attack it this way and we can't do it this way because you know we'll be exposed and then this person that we're trying to save will be uh, eliminated annihilated so we have to do it like this and we have only this amount of time and you're good at this particular skill and you're good at this so we want you up here and we want you down here oh wait a minute what is it what if it's a trap what is our backup plan what is plan bc and all this it's just kind of like you know just like a little 90s uh adventure or something like that and that's just kind of cool to kind of see that in an uh i'm gonna say an avengers movie in an mcu movie uh, it's just something fresh and i you know I, I haven't really seen any other reviews from anybody else but it's just something brand new that I haven't seen or experienced before. I've experienced in other movies, but I haven't experienced that uh, in the MCU. Another great thing that I liked, and I'm just going to go ahead and get all the good stuff out the way. The scrolls. I really did like the scrolls. And I will say early on uh, in the marketing material for Captain Marvel, some of the effects when they was releasing the trailers and, and uh, featurettes and things like that, it really did not seem like the effects were done. And I just really never, I understand that they have to promote the film early on, but I've never really understand or understood when studios will release footage out to the public when the, uh, when the effects are not done. That just seems like it'll be a turnoff, you know, but it worked in this. I was worried a little bit how the scrolls look. It looked like it was just a bunch of cracked up Play-Doh sometime in the marketing material, but the way that they were transforming back and forth. And if you, if, the, if you knew that this, the scrolls is an uh, alien race from far on the other sides of the galaxy if they see an object person or thing or well, i'll just say a person they can mimic that person down to their d and a and in the little bit that i know about the korean scrolls they can get all their memories and i don't want to spoil too much here this is a non-spoiler review i like the rules that they set when you are building when you're having a film 
and you're building a new universe, especially when people have not seen it before, something that is very important is setting the rules of the universe and sticking to that. And they did a very good job with that with the scrolls. They, um, you know, there really isn't like, uh, well, no, I, I'll talk about that later. But I really do like the way the scrolls were infiltrating Earth and shape shifting and things like that. Some of it is predictable, but that's fine. They were doing that on purpose. But some of it was like, oh, snap. I didn't realize this was a scroll or whatever. Y'all are really good at this. You know what I'm saying? Y'all been doing this for a long time. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, and I'm, I'm, they're being obvious with that. And so am I. But, you know, there were a few times in this film that I was getting tricked with some of the scroll, scroll transformations and shape shifting, thinking that this is a normal human or something like that, but it's a scroll or whatever. And, you know, the way that, you know, Nick Fury and Captain Marvel, the way that they would have to go about finding out, okay, are you a real human or are you a scroll? I, I liked it. it. It was very intriguing. It was, it was neat. Um, it was well thought out. It was well paced. And I just got to give it up to everybody involved that brought that to the screen because they did a great job. Another great thing about this movie is it did waste no goddamn time or whatever. You know what I'm saying? No pointless dialogue or, you know, low ho, let's go over here and have ice cream combs just to stretch out the movie. No, 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 no. When Samuel Jackson comes onto the scene, when Phil Coulson comes onto the scene and they're trying to interrogate Carol Danvers, uh, Brie Larson's character. There is no time wasted. Of course, she's she's from she's or she's an alien or she appears to be an alien. She thinks she's an alien. She's just, she's like, hey, my name is Verz and I'm across the galaxy and these squirrel creatures are invading your land. Is this C fifty three and how do I communicate with this? And the normal human is gonna be like, okay, what the hell is going on? What is wrong with this chick right here? Are you mentally insane? But at the same time, the film reveals itself right then and there at the perfect time to be like, oh, okay, this chick is not lying. She may be an ally or she may be this, but something's going on and we need to get to the bottom of it. And I like that when 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 the film is not wasting time, it doesn't get bored. It does not have time to get bored. It just continue to going, firing on all cylinders. And that's just great entertainment for me and just stuff that we've never seen before in the MCU. And I'm just kind of eating it all up. Another great thing is when you're looking at all the uh, promotional material for this film, you know, you know that um, Brie Larson's character, Captain Marvel, uh, Miss Cap, excuse me, Captain Marvel Vers or Carol Danvers. You know that she's having some trippy things with her memory. She doesn't really know her origin. She thinks that she's a Cree, but she's really here on Earth. I love the way that they were doing the things with her memory and all the camera tricks and effects and editing and all that good stuff. That was very, 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 very well paced and thought out. And um, they just they did a great job there of just kind of mixing it in and revealing itself to the audience, to me, to you in little pieces and not just kind of, you know, not all at one time, just kind of shoving a pie in your face or anything like that. I was like, OK, I like this. I like the build up. The plot is getting thicker, thicker and thicker. Also. I forgot that this film took place in the 90s. I mean, I don't want to necessarily say how the film starts off and stuff like that, you know, but it, it's the Kree, it's the scroll and intergalactic empires and aliens and things like that. Their technology is like out there. It's like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? But then when you come down to earth, you're like, oh, snap, I forgot this is in the 90s. And they don't shove that in your face either. It's very subtle. These are points that where it takes its time. It has a ton of nostalgic value to it. I'm like, oh, my God, I remember that. Oh, I remember this store i remember that story it's not just blockbusters oh i remember this song and i remember that song oh man remember how we used to have to wait this long to do this and that and sometimes when they're doing that that comedy and it is just like perfect or whatever comes out of nowhere i mean you we all know how long it used to take for air wear a doll up all that crap i mean it's just crazy and they have like little uh, sprinkles of that throughout throughout the movie and, and it's brilliant or whatever and the thing is you know some some and these are legitimate complaints even coming from myself in the past that some there's a difference between funny moments and jokes funny moments are just natural and genuine and they just you know happen on their own jokes is when they actually shoehorn it in there are really no jokes in this movie that they just shoehorn it in they're really all just really funny natural moments and that i mean you can't help but laugh at it and the laughing is not distracting as soon as you're done laughing you're able to get back to the plot and enjoy them and excuse me and enjoy the film now let's just talk about the characters themselves the acting in this movie it's great not anything well no no oh actually it is great and I, i'll get to that for a second but let's talk about brie larson here 
Now, this film right here is a great representation for women, you know, women feeling strong and empowering themselves. Of course, you know, the DC Warner Brothers, they already did that with Wonder Woman. But now it's Marvel's turn. We haven't had a female led superhero movie. And of course, we've had Black Widow and we've had Scarlet Witch and they're great. But we have not had a, um, a female led solo movie. And this is the first in the MCU with Brie Larson. Now, you know, some people are stupid and long line talking about social justice warriors and dumb crap like that. Get out of here. I don't, I don't, that's just stupid talk. But this film is not remotely close to that. It's not like I'm Brie Larson, Captain Marvel, and I'm here to save the day, and I'm strong girl power. No, crap. It's not like that at all. It's, 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 you know, I liked her attitude. I mean, you know, in this film, she was able to put men in their place when they needed to be put in their place. And I was like, okay, snap. I, I, I see you, girl. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Do your thing. And the same thing, not just with her, you know, for like a white female representation. There's also great black female representation here as well with Monica Rambeau. And she's a character that I'm not too familiar with as well, but I've seen other people online get excited about her. And there was a line in this movie. I was like, oh, goddamn, girl, chat. You know, I'm like, do you want to go to dinner? Where do you want to go? I will take you there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was nice, but it wasn't no stupid, like, rah, 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 you know, corny girl power stuff. Nothing wrong with girl power. I'm just saying, like, the corniness. This was just like, okay, it, it was well placed. You know, sometimes women need to be put in their place. Sometimes men need to be put in their place. Sometimes people just need to be put in the places that they need to be put placed. And it, it was some place put in this movie by some some good women in this. Monica Rambeau, black woman, and Brie Larson and Captain Marvel white women so you know you just got a good mix of everything and about that Monica Rambeau uh, hopefully we, well we're gonna see her down later in the future or her daughter Maria Rambeau now the daughter Maria Rambeau in this movie a little girl her name is and I forgot it's um where is her name man my I thought I wrote it down but I didn't write it down my goodness gracious and I'm gonna take my time too because I have to give her uh, Akira Akbar Oh my goodness gracious, she was the cutest thing in this whole little movie. I mean, I wish this girl was like my little sister so I can just protect her and teach her everything that she needs to know about the world. She was just adorable and usually when a little kid, I think she, in real life she's 11 when I looked it up, but usually in movies like, you know, like little kids can be annoying sometimes or I hear that complaint. She was not annoying at all. I, I love this little girl. She was cute. I mean, like my goodness gracious, she had her uh, uh, long curly natural black hair bouncing and waving and floating around and it was just beautiful let me just give me a second guys let me just go to real life real quick black women oh let me let me speak to you real quick because i know y'all got it rough you know we all grew up where our mamas and aunties and grandmas and stuff like that was putting perms in your head we all understand how rough it is i'm not going to stay on this tangent for too long i understand and it conditioned us and especially you guys a certain way to feel about your hair we knew that our mamas and aunties and grandma they couldn't get jobs in corporate america with their natural afros and things like that you know you go to cobra oh, 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 braids dreads what's going on oh, you know no I, I understand but and and it is really messed this a lot of us up in this in in this in this world i understand but please if you just take from me women please get some confidence I, I feel you i feel your pain just please rock your natural black hair it is your natural black beautiful hair it, it is gorgeous and the way that miss akira akbar miss monica rambeau was rocking in this movie or the appearance of natural hair it was just beautiful and it was just one of the things that i loved about this movie the most and i, I just had to i just had to give it you know that credit where uh credit is due uh, another actor that I want to talk about is Ben Mildeson. Uh, he always plays villains in this film, and he did uh, in in films that he's in. And sometimes people say that he's typecast, and he is. But he was great in this film. He had a nice charisma, and, and he was kind of like a he was kind of like a smooth, suave type of villain. You know what I'm saying? Just like look, you know what I'm saying? I, look, I'm gonna just stop wasting time. Okay, just listen to me. My way is the way that we want to go. All I want to do is invade your planet. That's all I want to do is invade your planet. You know, he may, he's thinking like, all I want to do is have sex with your wife. That's all I want to do. And you may think to yourself like, well, all he wants to do is that. It's like, well, no, it's, that's just, I'm just saying, that's how he talks or whatever. And I like the way it came through. It, it, it was just nice. I've never seen a villain like this before in the MCU. Uh, I mean, we had Thanos. That was great. We had Killmonger. Uh, that was great. We had, um, what was the villain's name? And, um, in uh, Thor the Dark World. Uh, uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. I I'm having a brain fart right now. But uh, 
Uh, just a d- completely different villain, and the film did not focus on the villain necessarily. This was all Captain Marvel shine, and that's perfectly fine. I, you know, I have uh, nothing wrong with that, uh, or whatever. But uh, again, I like the na- '90s nostalgia. I like how the plot thickens. I like how this film stands on its own, but also uh, related to the other movies, the Cree world building, the scrolls, the technology, the fighting, and all that. It was dope. I loved it. I loved the memories. The effects were cool too. But now we got to talk about the bad. We got to talk about the stuff that I just did not care about. Now, the first act of this film was absolutely fantastic. I was like, damn, you know, the the first two acts was damn near perfect. You know what I'm saying? I said to myself, like, man, this movie is great. It's fantastic. It's like one of the best films in MCU, like top five. I'm not going to say top three, but this could potentially be top five. Let's get to the bad. First thing I did not like about this movie was Samuel Jackson's hairline. I don't know what the hell y'all was thinking. That shit was whack. Sorry, the profanity, but like, come on, man. Y'all couldn't have gave him a taper fade, ball fade, a straight lineup. I don't know what y'all was doing with his head, but it did not. Now, the de-aging from uh, Samuel Jackson and Phil Coulson and all that stuff. Um, what's Phil Coulson's real? Clark Gregg. Um, that was great, but the the, the, edge, the edge up or whatever, his edge up game was on whack. It looked like, you know, they edged him up with a spatula or something. It just wasn't going down. Um, I, I don't know. I wasn't feeling that. Another thing that I was not feeling in this movie was the damn cat, Goose. Um, that's a flirking or whatever. Now, in my opinion, the only reason they put the cat in this movie was to appeal to comic book fans. I mean, and that's fine if the cat serves a purpose and they try to give him a purpose in this film. But to be honest with you, in my opinion, it was completely unnecessary and just didn't um, need to be in there. Now, I'm also going to say this right here. Um, I don't consider this a spoiler because I'm not giving. Well, I mean, I guess I am. Well, we all know that in this movie, it reveals how Samuel L. Jackson lost his eye. I did not like it. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was corny. I thought it was lazy. I was very, very, very disappointed with the way uh, Samuel Jackson lost his eye. It kind of dilutes a line um, in another MCU movie. And I don't want to say anymore because I'll talk about it that way. It, it may be too revealing, but I was highly disappointed. I was hot. Well, I mean, even though Samuel Jackson's hairline was whack. It wasn't a deal breaker, but I was highly disappointed with uh, the way Samuel Jackson lost his eye. And the cat thing was just completely unnecessary. They did not have to include him in this in the film. I mean, they they just didn't. And um, yeah, I'll leave that there. Another thing that I uh, did not uh, like is um, I talked about how great the first act was and the second act. But the third act was just not as polished as the first and second act when the the crap hits the fan and brie larson goes binary aka super saiyan all my dragon ball dragon ball z dragon ball gt dragon ball super dragon ball hero fans out there you know what i'm saying like it was corny to me it was goofy it's like when she finally powers up or whatever i mean i, I like the way it looked it looked cool but the the way that she just kind of transformed to that next level of power i was like okay really Excuse me, this doesn't really make sense to me. And then the film said that it was going to explain it, but it just never really did. I mean, it explained it, but it was I, I just wasn't buying it. I, I was just like, OK. And then when the, the fighting and stuff came through, I'm just like, this is not intense. This is just I I, I just was a little disappointed in that myself. Um, you know, the third act itself and then just, you know, Brie Larson. I mean, and that's what we all came. To, I have to be honest, guys. I have to be honest. That's what we came to see. We came to see Brie Larson kick ass and go Super Saiyan or whatever. And she did kick ass. And she did go Super Saiyan. I'm not saying the whole thing was bad, but there were some parts when I was like, okay, like, it was the song choice that they used. And I'm just like, y'all was jamming this whole movie. Why? I mean, it's just like, imagine you just at the club or the bar and they just, you know, got some bangers and they're like, oh, snap. You know, you know, and then they're like, and all of a sudden, you know, it's time to go home and they, I love you, you love me. Where you can be like, what? Come on, DJ. That's how I felt when I'm like, what is going on? I don't know. I mean, y'all remember Aquaman? Well, anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but 
it was a ton of good. I already talked about that, but we didn't ha- I didn't like Samuel Jackson's hairline. I didn't like the damn cat. Um, the song choice when she finally powers up was stupid, and you know it it, it could have been a little bit better with the uh, with the fighting and stuff like that. It, it was just kind of falling all over the all over the place or whatever with that. But the movie was still great. Um, try to see this film on the biggest screen as possible. Please try to see this in IMAX, a real IMAX screen, not this fake LIMAX, whatever, where it's just a big screen, but the ratio is not right. You know, look it up. There's YouTube's on video. Just look up IMAX ratio and all that. You can Google the proper theater. It is worth it because I, I was just, I was looking at the movie like, damn, I, I wish I was seeing this. I can tell that this is like a massive shot, wide and tall. Like I said, wide and tall, wide and tall. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, and then of course the 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 their first credit, the first uh, mid credit scene was dope as hell. Everybody was like, oh my god, I can't wait to see Endgame. But the last one was like, really. Y'all made me wait through all this. I'm just not. I mean, you can wait if you want to, but in my opinion, it's not worth it. If I had to rate uh, Captain Marvel out of a one out of ten, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Yes, an eight out of ten. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Captain Marvel, or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me, or do you disagree? Disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all the good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of the screen, and I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below. And guys, please uh, share this video. Um, ever since January 20th of 2019, uh, I've noticed that there's something wrong with my YouTube channel. That is one of the reasons why I have not been posting a lot of reviews. And I have been emailing YouTube and they're finally escalated to try to get it fixed. Hopefully it will. But please share this video. A lot of people are telling me they're getting uh, notifications way later. It's just a bunch of stuff that I'm trying to work out. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Captain Marvel. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.